At the end of my last Dead Man Mode video, we ended on a bit of a high note. Well, a high note for my standards, anyways. We completed the Desert Treasure quest, I've got three fresh brand new lives, and I've got a decent amount of gear. I'm gonna try to continue improving the account by unlocking Piety next. Okay, there is the murder mystery quest completed. Got a little crafting XP for that. Uh, okay, so all I have left to do now before I can do King's Ransom is... You know, just, uh... Kind of minor quest, uh, one small favor. Yeah, everybody's favorite. Okay, there's Jungle Potion completed. That gave us like 30 herb lore levels. We'll take that, thank you. I am not a big fan of this quest, so I am happy that I am done. Uh, this should be Shiloh Village completed. Some more free crafting XP, lovely. Okay, now we do one small favor. Thank God, I'm so excited. Finally, dude. I have literally been doing this for like an hour. But I finally have your red mahogany log. And that will be one small favor completed. Now, I think I get XP lamps for this. I'm gonna chuck these on prayer. Because, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be working on getting piety next, but I still need to get 70 prayer, so. Let's chuck these on prayer. How much XP do we get? 250k? Holy shit. And, oh, that's wicked. That gets us exactly level 70 prayer. That is perfect. Okay, when I'm done talking to King Arthur, we should be handing in the King's Ransom quest, which gave me a bunch of defense XP, and we are now level 73 magic. Love to see it. Now, of course, that's cool and all, but what I actually need to do now is the Knight's Training Ground mini quest, and then... We get to use Piety. Now, to actually unlock Piety, you have to complete the Knight's Training Ground minigame, and that was not fun. So, like, some of the brothers are... I don't know if they're brothers. Some of the knights are weak to stab, some are weak to slash, some to crush. Well, obviously, I'm just kind of trying to make it do all I've got as a dragon scimitar. So, like, the brothers who were weak to crush and then resistant to slash took, like, five minutes to kill. This is not fun. It is done. So Lancelot is dead. Holy XP. I've got the prayers unlocked. I should tell you because I have no food. Good God. I didn't even see... I think, what did I get? 600k XP in every melee stat. That is nutty. Well, there we go. There is a uh, piety unlocked. We love to see it. And with Piety Unlocked, that should speed up my combat training by quite a bit, so that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to go do some Slayer because, well, Slayer is actually a very good way of making money. On top of, you know, being good XP, you can get these lucky Tier 5 emblems, which are worth about 600k a piece. On top of the chance to get Sigils, hell, you could even get a Vesta's Longsword if you get lucky. So, I'm just going to focus on getting my, uh, my melee stats up by doing Slayer now. Okay, anything good? Sigil of Prosperity. I don't know what that is. Inspect. 20% increased chance to receive loot from the unique Dead Man loot table. Ooh. I want to see what I can sell it for. People have told me it's worth quite a bit of money. We're just going to try this. Oh! Oh, that's huge! <laughs> I'm rich! Well, I'm, I'm not rich, but... This is the most money I've had by far. So with the 500k from the Sigil of Prosperity, I decided to upgrade my plate legs. I went ahead and bought a pair of Torag's plate legs, which I just figured it made a lot of sense because, you know, with people spamming VLS specs, you want to have some good melee defense. And with my Torag's plate legs, I got a little confident, so I decided to head back to the Warriors Guild to try to reclaim my Dragon Defender. Now, obviously, when I lost my last life on the last video, I completely wiped, meaning I lost my Dragon Defender. So I was like, okay, you know, we got a little bit better tank gear. Let's go back and get a Dragon Defender. And this dude gets on me, okay? And then I go back and I kill more Cyclops. Now, this, again, was a series of mistakes. I, I should have played this differently. I should have, like, got a Cyclops on me and then just bolted for the ladder. And then I easily could have gapped him and tellied away. But I didn't. And, uh, well, that was my mistake. <laughs> oh.
Oh my god, dude. Holy. I just got fucking smacked. It's probably safer just to camp prey melee anyway. Like, well, I, well, the reason why I wasn't camping prey melee is because I knew he didn't have a VLS, so I was like, all right. But, holy shit, dude. And, you know, some people just never learn, do they? At this point, I was like, all right, you know, everything, it's fine, okay? I put a D-skim, I put some black D-hide in my, uh, my safety box. So even though I died, I still had some gear to use. I was like, it's okay, everything, it's gonna be fine. So I hopped to a different world, and I came back to the Warriors Guild later. Because I still wanted to get my Dragon Defender, and guess what? I got attacked again, which, you know, I probably should have just stayed away from the Warriors Guild. Uh... As you can see, though, this guy is railing me. He VLSs me a 71 and then a 75 for the KO. Dude, you just have to pray melee. It just... You, like, you you have to be really good with your prayer switches or you have to camp pray melee or you're just, you're just boned. So at this point, we are now back down to one life again. Things are looking grim. I took a D-skim and a black D-hide body and legs out of my safety box, and I was like, well, we're going back to Slayer again, and if this doesn't work, I think I'm probably going to quit Dead Man mode. Now, things get a little bit immortal here. This guy dropped coins on the floor, and it was one mil. He said he was about to quit Dead Man mode, so he was like, here, have some fun with this. Now... I feel like, typically, I'm not the kind of guy that would take donations or whatever, but here's the thing. I suck at dead man mode anyway. As far as I'm concerned, if anybody should take donations, it's probably me, okay? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And as you can see, we get an Archaic Emblem Tier 5 drop. Uh, I use that one mil to buy, if you look at my inventory, I've got uh, a Guthans body and Darog's legs, and I also bought, like, an Amulet of Glory, stuff like that, so... The one mil went towards some uh, some tankier gear, but yeah, that tier 5 emblem right there was big, because that means I can buy some more potions, which means more money. With the 600k that I got from selling the potions, I went ahead and bought a black mask. Now, a black mask isn't like a necessity, but, I mean, if I'm gonna do lots of Slayer, I feel like it's worth investing in, because it speeds it up by quite a bit. Now, I'm not really sure that I can explain this series of events, like why I bought a black mask for Slayer, and then immediately went to go do Barrows. I I don't really know. But here we are at Barrows. Now Barrows is kind of spooky. Uh, you know, it, it's it's pretty frequently PK'd, but it's not the most difficult place to escape at. And some of the Barrows pieces are worth a lot of money. So I figured I'd give it a try, see if I can get lucky. There we go. Oh! That's gotta be expensive! Surely! Bro, that's that actually, I'm pretty sure, is worth a good bit of money. It has to be. Dude, holy shit. <laughs> First fucking chest, man. The Carol skirt sold for just over 300k, which was a little bit less than I thought it was going to be worth. It turns out the Carol's top is super expensive, but the skirt is... I mean, it's still a good drop to get, but it's not super expensive. Uh, after that, I was actually able to afford an Abyssal Whip. As you can see, I've got a whip in my inventory, and I bought some Barrows gloves as well. And then I headed back to Barrows because, well, I was to keep the luck going. Okay, chest number one, we get a Carol skirt. Chest number two, nothing. Chest number three... Oh my fuck, I'm keeping that, I'm keeping that, I'm keeping that. Oh my god, dude. Holy, I'm getting such good items, bro, what the fuck. The Aram skirt drop was absolutely huge. I think it sold for just over one mil. Those are like the four most expensive Barrows pieces you can get, is the Aram's top and bottom, and the Carol's top and bottom. So getting a Carol skirt and then an Aram skirt is just very, very good luck. Well, I had my fun doing a little bit of Barrows, but after getting attacked a few times, I figured it was probably time to go back and do some Slayer and keep on getting those combat stats up. Oh! Oh! Oh, yes, Daddy, thank you. Archaic Emblem Tier 5 and 37 Lanta Dimes. Wait, can you not put an Archaic Emblem in a looting bag? Okay. That is another, like, 600k in bruise right there. Oh, we love to see it! Calling an imbued heart? Do I can't imagine how much money that's worth. Holy fuck. Nope. Rune plate body and some torstals. 
Hey, we just got nine. This guy, this guy said he was gonna leave me alone. We just got level 99 strength. Thank you for the grats. And now we move on to training attack specifically. So after finishing that Slayer task, I decided to buy my next gear upgrade, and that was a Torax helmet. Now, Torax helmet isn't the best Barrow's melee helmet. I would say the Varax helm probably is for the prayer. But the Torax was way cheaper, and I figured it'd be better than running around in a black mask, when I'm not on task, of course. So, I just got assigned some Dust Devils, and I want to kill them in Paul Nivnich. So, I went ahead and did the Daddy's Home quest. That should get me up to, I think, like, 30-something construction. Okay, we'll take 26. That should be good enough for me to, one, make a POH, and then, two, mo move it to Paul Nivnich. At least, I hope so. Let's see. Can you move my house, please? Uh, Paul Nivnich. Excellent. Thank you. Oh my. Oh my. Archaic Emblem Tier 5, 13 Super Combats. That's a good drop. Holy shit. VLS incoming. I would pog champ so hard, dude. Sigil of the Gnomes. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that's probably not very good. Sigil of the Barbarians, uh, I have that one on, it's, I don't think it's expensive, but it's not like, it's not super cheap either, so that's a decent drop. So, definitely a very successful Slayer task, between the tier 5 emblem, and then those two Sigil drops that I got off of Superiors, I made like 800k, and with that, I was able to upgrade to a Carol's Top and Bottom. Carol's Top and Bottom is a really big upgrade from Black Dehyde in the Mage Defense, so, Definitely gear that I'm going to want to keep for the 1v1s, and it's also just good for escaping PKers while I'm training. So for some reason I forgot to actually record this, but I took my new Carol's top, and I left my Carol's skirt by offer in the GE, and I went to go do some Slayer, and I got myself a level 99 attack, so that's strength and attack done, so now just defense left to go. Now, here's where things get interesting. So, do you remember earlier in the video when somebody dropped me one mil and I said, if anybody should be able to take donations, it's me? Well, I got another donation, and it was 10 mil, man. So, I was just, you know, streaming Slayer, and this guy smoking Mills comes into my Twitch chat, and he's like, yo, I have a ton of money from swapping, let me give you some money, and I'm like... I mean, okay, if you want to. Dude gives me 10 mil, which is ridiculous. So the first thing I do with that is I buy a Sigil of the Guardian Angel. Now, if you don't know what this does, the Sigil of the Guardian Angel, if you have that equipped, if you die, you don't lose a life. So, like, considering I have one life left, I, I need this. This is huge. Now, apart from the Guardian Angel, I also wanted to buy some gear upgrades, and I started with the Amulet of Fury. The Amulet of Fury is a very good overall upgrade. It gives way more defense than an Amulet of Glory, and a little bit more, like, strength bonus and whatnot, too. I also put an offer in to buy an Aram's top and bottom. Now, that took a little bit to buy, but I figured I'm gonna need that for the 1v1 fights as well, so... That is what the, uh, the 10 mil donation went to. I bought a Guardian Angel, an Amulet of Fury, and an Aram's top and bottom. And I figured the rest of the money would be most wisely put towards getting some of my skills up, such as magic. Now, magic is actually pretty cheap to train, because runes are inexpensive, and there's a sigil that gives you a 50% chance to not consume your runes when you cast a spell. So, you don't even use that many runes in the first place, but I decided to do some Fire Wave High Alking, which was, of course, ridiculously fast XP per hour and very easy. Well, I've just been chilling, fire waving away whilst I play Iron Mammal in the live game. And there we go, there is level 99 magic. So, <clears throat> I would get a tickle in my throat when I'm recording a clip, of course. So, there's magic done. Uh, now I just need a couple more defense levels and a lot of range levels still. Oh, 155 abyssal demons, we kind of figured this was coming. As far as I'm concerned, this is my death, but we gotta give it a try, man. We could get a whip, or five. It could be big money. You know how I said I thought the Abyssal Demon task was gonna be the death of me? Well, this is the reason why. I literally didn't even make it to the Slayer Tower before getting attacked. I crossed over into the Mauritania region, and a PKer just happens to be running by. I was like, okay, this is just some terrible luck. 
Now, I'm going to let this play out because this is probably, I mean, as someone who hasn't played Dead Man modes much in the past, this was incredibly intense for me. Well, I got really lucky right there because I, I need to bring more super restores, dude. So I broke this down on stream and I want to break it down for you guys as well because I think it's really interesting what happened. So the guy at the top of the chain, I think when he first went up there, he didn't have a nose peg on. And as you can see, right when I went up there, he drank a brew. I can tell that's what happened because he put his mage gear on and he tried to barrage me, but he wasn't able to because he was brewed down. He then drinks another dose of potion, which is probably a super restore, to try to barrage me again, and that gave me my window to get away, so I got really lucky. After that very scary run in at the Slayer Tower, I figured it would probably be for the best to let Dead Man mode simmer for a little bit, and it has. At the moment, if you play in the middle of the night, there's like 50 people on each world, so you can get a lot done without really being too at risk, and namely, I wanted to get my Mage Arena 2 cape. So of course, you have to start by completing Mage Arena 1, and then you have to cast each of the god spells 100 times in the arena, which is easy, it just takes time. And then after that, you have to locate to the Mage Arena 2 bosses. Now, I got really, really lucky. So first off, I did the Guthix one. And as you can see, the Sarah Doman dude is just chilling over there. That's because I checked both of them while I was at it. And I spawned the Sarah guy first, actually. So I, I knew right off the bat, both the Guthix and the Sarah were going to be in the exact same spot for me. And then the Zami fella was just a little bit to the north, so I got really, really lucky once again. I had the exact same thing happen on my sub to Mammal account, obviously not in dead man mode, but I had the same thing happen where all three of my fellows were like really close together. And if you look at the map of the possibilities, they can be very far apart, so I don't know how I keep getting them so clumped up, but uh, we take those. Okay, let's hand in this demon's heart, and I can get my Mage Arena 2 cape. Now, we are obviously going to go for the, uh, the Zamorak Mage Arena 2 cape, because that is the coolest looking one, and don't even at me. I'm gonna get out of here, though, because this is actually dangerous right here, but, uh, eh, good time to do, uh, a little Mage Arena 2, 3 in the morning, got her done. Well, from the start of this video to the end of it, I think we made some pretty decent gear upgrades, if I do say so myself. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Uh, it certainly went a little bit smoother than the last one. Um, now, I'd like to get at least a few more pieces of gear upgraded, and I've got a few stats left that I need to get to 99, but, you know, I I'm moderately happy with the gear right now. I, I don't plan on going for full armadillo dfs vls all that jazz i just want like a decently good setup so that i can go into the 1v1s put up a decent fight have a little bit of fun so hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh on the next one we've got a few more small things to upgrade but we're about ready to get our ass beat in the 1v1s